my new thermoacoustic engine is made up of a small number of relatively simple components. Recently, many people have asked me for instructions on how to rebuild the thermoacoustic Sterling with simple means. I built the engine according to the ideas of Jamie Gross et al. and their book Introduction to Thermoacoustic Stirling Engines. The engine is described in great detail here and anyone with a well-equipped workshop can rebuild it. I think it would be great to modify the design on this basis so that anyone could build the engine with simple means. I alone don't have the time. But if enough people were seriously interested, we could develop some kind of open source community engine for everyone. Another goal would be to increase the power at the same time to make it practical to use. In the past, I have been amazed at how many good ideas and solutions come out of a lot of people working together here on YouTube. There are several tasks to solve. My version of the engine has a lot of metal parts made on a lathe and milling machine. This is not possible for many people. The main reason for using metal is its high thermal conductivity and heat resistance. The coolers could also be made from thermally conductive filament using a 3D printer. The special i3 filament from TC Poly is available with different base polymers and has a high thermal conductivity and heat resistance for plastics, but is quite expensive. The clever use of metal inserts would be cheaper and probably better. Metal inserts, made with simple tools, could be embedded in 3D printed parts, leaving only the relevant parts in metal. With creativity and good ideas, the heater also can be made with simple means. I already have some ideas with a bar or grid structure. I look forward to hearing your ideas too. Soldering can easily be replaced by gluing or taping the tubes together. With a little care, the Pyrex test tube can be easily cut using a mini drill and an inexpensive diamond cutting disc. The power extraction unit is easy to produce with a 3D printer and the piston running surfaces must be ground accordingly. It is also necessary to determine which filaments are best suited for this purpose. Do you need a high performance filament such as carbon fiber reinforced polyamide, which is easy to print, heat resistant and dimensionally stable but expensive, or is an inexpensive standard filament sufficient? What post-treatment will provide the best seal for the 3D printed parts? Is a simple epoxy coating sufficient or are special products such as Dictol required? Is vacuum technology useful? What is the best way to combine the printed parts with the metal inserts? I would love to hear your thoughts and solutions. Please post your ideas here in the comment section so that anyone can join in the discussion. If you have drawings or anything like that, please send them to my email address and I will put them up for discussion in the next video. I am convinced that a lot of can be achieved if many people think seriously about it. I upload all relevant drawings, photos and instructions to the members area. Sadly, this is the only way for me to make material available here fast and on a permanent basis. Unfortunately, this will cost you 99 cents. YouTube does not offer free memberships. So, if you want to have immediate access to all the content and support me, please become a channel member. I will invest all membership fees in the further development of the engine and may try a more expensive filament or something like that. In any case, all material will be published in videos and all instructions will be available for free. So, get to work and thank you for watching.